here to make their case, Ari Melber, correspondent for The Nation, and Philip Klein, Washington correspondent for The American Spectator. Ari, you get the question first. Does the president need to do more right now? Yeah, he probably needs to get the public seeing where the next domestic spending is going to come, um, whether that's the implementation of this huge stimulus that we already had, getting those stories out, which I would say we're not hearing, and Herbert speaks to that in today's column, um, and then also in figuring out whether there's going to be more of a jobs push here. I mean, you've got 15.1 million people unemployed. That is larger than the population of 46 states in this country. So you've got to go a lot harder in the communications and in the substance to make sure people see that this administration is putting jobs first, not just banks and not just long-term health care reform. Philip Klein, so many Republicans argue against the stimulus because even though it was designed to build up construction jobs, Republicans said it was pork. How would those 15 million who are unemployed, how would they benefit from the Republican idea of tax cuts? Well, I think that it depends on what tax cuts uh, you consider. I think a payroll tax cut would be the right prescription because a payroll tax cut has two effects. One is that it hits middle and lower income families the hardest. So cutting that tax would put more money in that pot their pockets. And secondly, it's also a tax on employment. It makes it more costly for businesses to hire people. So I think if you lowered the price of employment by lowering the payroll tax, it would be easier for employers to justify keeping their staff levels up and hiring more people. And Ari, Bob Herbert also says that there are no big ideas have emerged. I mean, you have some that are being floated out, but he's saying what's also missing is that there are no big ideas. Who is to blame? And, and I think at this point you've got to start blaming someone because a lot of people are out of work and they can't blame themselves. I got to tell you, I love Bob Herbert. I thought that was the weaker part of the column, though. We hear this a lot. Big ideas, where's the creativity? I don't think that's the issue. Herbert ends by calling for more urgency. I don't think that's the issue either. The real question is how do you spread your spending between jobs, unemployment insurance, food stamps assistance, spending in the states, infrastructure building, all those on the ground programs that help people, and how does that mix offset with the tax cuts and all the, the bank bailouts? And I think what you're seeing, at least in the polling, is a concern among the public that there's been too much for the banks and not enough for Main Street. And when you look back at that stimulus, of course, there was hundreds of millions of dollars given over to these tax cuts that, uh, that we just heard about. Those aren't working very well at all. So I think it's the mix. I don't think it's, it has to be some crazy big idea. No, all right, but, but, Philip, yeah, but go ahead, Philip, last word. Yeah, I mean, I just think that we've had all of this spending, and that the problem is premising everything on the idea that if government could distribute spending properly, we could stimulate the economy. That hasn't worked so far. The you know, president well, is not the CEO of the economy, so the point well, is, well, is that <laughs> if you want jobs, then make it cheaper for employers to hire more workers. That's a good point, Philip, except for the argument that what the stimulus has done may have kept the economy off the cliff, even though it employment is still rising. In any case, Philip Klein and Ari Melbourne, thank you both so much uh, for coming on. We appreciate it.